Folks, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Marketing. We'll be spending the next 45 to 50 minutes discussing a tried and true method of getting in front of folks to offer the programs that we need, know they need, but are somehow having some difficulty uh, getting the appointment, whatever it happens to be. It's all part of that grand marketing uh, plan that we have. And sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. Direct mail is one of those things that uh, is kind of, yeah, I'm an old Monty Python fan, you know, and there's a skit where it comes out and it says, I'm not dead yet. Well, neither is direct mail. What we're going to discuss today are some different things, some suggestions that might, however, make it more effective for you and how we can incorporate it into an entire program of marketing to the public, to our target audience. And so today's presentation is being recorded. It will be made available on our website at premiersmi.com and on our YouTube channel as well, as soon as it uploads after the conclusion of today's presentation. And the software package we're using does have a section for both questions and chat. I ask that you use the question section. We find that we do cover most of the questions that pop up in these on uh, the, through the course of the presentation. However, you want to make certain that we get you full value of the time you're investing with us here today. And that means getting you answers to your questions. I recognize many of the names on today's attendance. There are some folks I don't know, but I'd like to start out with a little bit of a level set as to who Premier Marketing is. We're a national marketing organization founded in 1968. That's part of the Integrity Marketing Platform, offices across the country. We're licensed in all 50 states. We act as an insurance wholesaler through independent insurance agents such as yourself. And we do so through contracts that are at the highest possible commission levels with recruiting contracts available to those who qualify. And that includes a full portfolio of product that is of particular appeal to our target demographic, to the Medicare population, and in many circumstances goes beyond that. And that includes the base medical coverages that you have for the Medicare programs, the Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement Plans, and the standalone prescription drug programs. But we also cover a full portfolio of life insurance and annuity products, final expense life insurance and pre-need plans, long and short-term care programs, disability income plans, and those ancillary benefits that fill the needs specific to individuals, dental vision hearing coverage, critical illness cancer plans, hospital indemnity, accident, and even telehealth programs, all part of an offering that we can make use of, particularly pertaining to today's topic in using different programs to elicit a response. When we look at our Medicare Advantage portfolio, it has the national carriers in there for your use, and that includes many of the strong regionals as well that can make a difference for you in your market. And the same philosophy carries over to prescription drug programs, where in most cases, these are available as part of the contract for that carrier for their Medicare Advantage product, couple of exceptions. Mutual of Omaha program is a standalone Part D prescription drug plan by itself, a separate contract. And Clever RX is actually a discount card, not a uh, approved Part D program. When we look at the Medicare supplements, big portfolio there, we want to appeal to the entire demographic of the Medicare population. And that includes uh, the spectrum of folks when it comes to income or different medical needs, things of that nature. And these can be very, very helpful when it comes to a direct mail campaign, much as the two previous uh, programs that, that we discussed, the MA or the PDP program, sometimes this entails a different type of targeting with the direct mail program and utilizing that knowledge along with some of the other systems that we have in play can really make you be successful in this space as well. When we look at the ancillary products, in each of these categories, you got the national leaders there for you. We're particularly enthusiastic about these because they bring to us not only a way to address a specific need of our prospects and clients, which is first and foremost, the most important thing that we do, but it also gives us another way to market. And these programs, because they have a specific appeal and they have a act as a hot button in many cases in a discussion with a prospect or client, 
it can be a valuable resource for us to use in many different marketing campaigns, and that includes through direct mail. So when we look at the Medicare market overall, we see a, a plethora of statistics that are thrown at us. You come out in these meetings, you hear about, oh, the aging of the baby boomers, the silver tsunami, one every 10 seconds, uh, 10,000 plus a day. And if you're looking at things based just on age, very true, their exponential growth. But what we're seeing is a percentage of folks now aren't accessing their full Medicare benefits when they're first eligible. They may be working past the age of 65 and have retirement benefits or whatever the reason may be, the target audience based just on age isn't a pure number, but it is made up for any type of shortfall on folks that aren't accessing benefits right away. It's more than made up for by the percentage of people that are on Medicare under the age of 65 and doing so because of medical disability. In each of these circumstances, it gives us then another part of a targeted approach to address these people because they're looking for answers for choices. And in many cases, well, I had an old sales manager who used to tell me a decision to make a decision is a decision. And sometimes the base medical coverage for Medicare is decided that way. Some folks will actually read some of their material that's sent to them and they'll decline part B should they choose to do so. Valid, particularly if they're working past age 65 and have group coverage. There is, of course, the folks that oh, I don't want to spend that kind of money, whatever it happens to be. Thankfully, that is still a small percentage, but there are folks that will self-insure for the medical costs that aren't fully covered by traditional Medicare. They may do so in that fashion and then pick up a Part D program to help with the prescription drug cost, or they may pick up a standardized, modernized Medicare supplement and add that D in order to cover the drugs, or take the advice of one of the plethora of commercials we see on television now for an all-in-one plan, the Part C programs, the Medicare Advantage plans, and once again, in each of those circumstances, it gives us an option to directly appeal to a population that needs our help, through a direct mail piece that's more personalized for that individual or strikes that hot button for them and elicits a greater response. We also want to make certain that what we do, we do so in a fashion that's understandable. I know that might sound a little remedial, but every segment of our society deals with acronyms. When you work in the insurance world, particularly dealing with the Medicare market, boy, there's a ton of them. Snapshot off the CMS website from some time ago, 4,420 acronyms. Uh, no wonder people are confused. No wonder we get confused occasionally. This gives us a guide to translate that to make certain that we are relaying information in a proper fashion and in the way we need to deliver it. And it also reminds us that if we use acronyms, we need to define them. We can't assume that the person knows what AEP is versus OEP versus SEP versus MOUSE. We want to make certain they understand what's going on, and it gives us a subtle nudge in the ribs to say, hey, if you can explain this and not use an acronym, you're ahead of the game. We look at timing when it comes to different marketing systems as well, and those active in the Medicare arena realize there are different standardized election periods. We're coming up on, as we're reminded by the different carrier and marketing company correspondence that tells us, hey, certification time. Hey, you're going to get a sneak peek for 2023. And that's all anticipating the upcoming annual election period. Obviously, five effective dates before the end of the year yet. We still have to sell things now. But because of that timing, we also want to make certain that it gives us the impetus to move forward with different mailing campaigns based on timing as well. That may be figuring out when you should mail a T65 individual as a part of a special election period. Or because of the annual election period, how do we time the mail to get there so we get the greatest response? And are there impediments to our ordering mail depending upon our marketing partners within that delivery system? Could well be. But direct mail now? Well, you have all these different special election codes, these different SEPs, that acronym. And we find that the majority of people on Medicare 
will qualify for a get out of jail free card, so to speak, uh, an SEP special election period based on their circumstance. That then gives us another way of reaching out to the public with direct mail on something that's keying on a specific opportunity for them to examine and change their coverage. And many of the mail houses have specific letters already set out that have demonstrated their effectiveness for a particular opportunity. Dual special needs plans, mail layer responses on them are higher than about anything right now, unless you're going into one of the entitlement programs with uh, LIS, low income subsidy extra help, or MSP, the Medicare savings programs. You have in those circumstances, a population that is particularly affected by monies or their own circumstances. And if we appeal specifically for that, utilizing some of the parameters you can put on where the mail goes, it can make a huge difference. And keep in mind, you have the special, special election periods in certain markets as well that give you even greater opportunity based on where you are and where you market. So if you know of a FEMA SEP, there's two acronyms right together. So you got the folks that are dealing with the weather, and the folks that are dealing with, hey, can I change my coverage right now? It gives you then a different target audience to use throughout the year. So as you can tell, as we go through and we speak to this, we're looking for folks that are searching for information that make decisions in the future, but it also touches base with those folks that didn't do that last year. And that's the majority of people on Medicare. No matter what their base medical coverage has been, they haven't been doing year over year uh, comparisons. This is some of the latest data from the Kaiser Family Foundation. This tells us that if we hit that population based on whatever our marketing plan is, we have an opportunity to help people now because they haven't examined their coverage year over year. They haven't seen the possibilities of how that affects them financially. And they may not be aware of the fact that, hey, I can still make a change because remember, we saw those 2022 SEPs, special election periods. And there's a shot we can help people now, put them in our book of business, re review when uh, the opportunities come for 2023, and we're ahead of the game. And we want to do so in a fashion where we're delivering that information in the manner in which they are open to receive it. So once an individual or party raises their hand and say, hey, give me some of that, are we sending the information snail mail like the old days? Are we sending the information electronically in our, on our presentations? How do we break them down based on the capabilities we have for an in-person across the kitchen table, shake hands and kiss babies and get elected type of pro program? Or utilize a total virtual approach, which many agents are doing now, or a combination thereof, which is probably what the majority of us do, where we wanna make certain that we deliver upon the information that's there. And there are certain pieces within the utilization of direct mail campaigns that help us in that regard. And I'll show those in just a second. We've got a population that's become much more comfortable in reaching out in that fashion. So some of the things that we do with direct mail can integrate in a virtual response. And folks are much more open to that than they've been in the past. Obviously, as folks age into Medicare, they've had perhaps more experience with electronic means of delivery of information. They're much more open to it. But the pandemic and other factors have really changed some of the older folks, particularly uh, their outlook on doing things electronically. For over a year, doctor's appointments were almost strictly virtual, be they primary care or specialists. You saw hospitals and dentists use virtual campaigns to speed up the process of uh, admission into a hospital, working with a new dentist, whatever it happens to be, filing cost, whatever, claims as part of it. It all is part of the new normal in a manner of speaking. That's become a trite phrase. But it is also a 
part of our life that's not gonna, ever going to completely change back. And that includes some of the things that are part of who we are, help define us what we are. We're celebrating our faith online even. So different things have changed. It gives us then an opportunity of utilizing in a historically valuable way of reaching out to the population and perhaps combining it with other electronic means to pump up the volume, so to speak. And we have a population that's willing to respond to it. So as we talk about how we look to prospect with direct mail, we want to look at a way that we can look at a system that's historically been very effective, but we can tweak it, we can do other things to make it more effective, you know, because it's the whole Henry Ford. If I had to ask people what they wanted, they'd ask for faster horses. Direct mail, well, we can make that horse faster. We can do some things to make it more effective. We can make it part of the automobile uh, arena, whatever it happens to be, because we are cognizant of the fact that we're gonna do some things right, we're gonna do some things wrong, but we can make certain that we minimize some of the factors that limit our success just by going, oh, there's a wall, let's throw a little mud on it. So we're gonna look at incorporating multiple programs into a marketing program. We did an AEP prep and plan presentation last month. I would ask that you go and look at that as well because it talks to, speaks to the different methods that are out there as well. We'll re-review a little of it, but we are very cautious about putting all our eggs in one basket, no matter what your preferred means of uh, prospecting happen to be. In the old days, before uh, MIPA changed some of the different things that came into play, before a do not call list became so prevalent, before Big Brother tells everybody who's calling them on their smartphone before they even decide to pick it up or not. It's one of those things that we want to make certain we maximize every avenue that's out there for us. We're not looking to put all our eggs in one basket, bet on one horse, and we can demonstrate that in here just a little bit because the whole thing of we got a newly aware population that's going to respond to some things electronically. We've got to realize there's not one way of reaching out to the public that uh, fits everybody. Oh, Facebook, Facebook. Yeah, there's a ton of people on Facebook. There's a ton of people on social media, but not everybody's on there. And that includes a lot of the folks that we want to talk to. So we're going to look at different campaigns to see how we can integrate them into a different type of overall marketing plan and utilize in a historically effective way of driving up the response and the success across the board. And that can be very, very helpful for us. So as we look at direct mail in itself, is it dead? Well, to paraphrase Mark Twain, no, it's not. Some returns are different. There's different timing that comes into play. Uh, COVID is really affecting the delivery of mail as well. Staffing issues within that agency, a number of different things that can come into play. But that just means we need to plan accordingly and we can still do so and make it work because this will help everything that we do. If we're working retail, a mail campaign can be a difference maker when it comes to the success of that kiosk at that pharmacy location. It not only helps drive the traffic, but it also improves the relationship that you have with management at that location. Because you're gonna show them, hey, I'm doing this to drive people to us. This is a symbiotic relationship. I'm not here just to leech off of your current client base because, well, gee, a whole bunch of them aren't stopping anyway. I'm going to drive people to you, and we're going to coordinate that through the use of different means to drive up activity. Because as I mentioned, social media doesn't fix everything. You get social media campaigns that can be very, very microwave in their response you can do some things quickly you turn them on boom i got somebody says they're interested i'll talk to them tomorrow uh, well they're expecting a microwave response as well so some of the things we've got to do when we look at the different alternatives to stir up business is the timing that comes afterwards as well so 
Looking at the United States Postal Service, it's still a primary backbone of communication. There's a ton of people out there that still get paper bills. A whole bunch of people set up on draft and electronic means, all that. But population we deal with, they actually go to the mailbox. They look at the correspondence. They actually read some of it. And it's a great way for us to, to do some things where we can calculate out response and how that affects our overall campaign. Because, man, every time they add an address, every time there's a new business, someone moves into a new home, oh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, there's another way of reaching into that population based on the use of direct mail. You look at this, statistically, eight out of 10 people review their mail daily. Well, for some of us, that means we're, we're, we're shuffling through some junk mail or different periodicals, whatever comes into play. How can we make our piece that we're sending not look like junk mail, J-U-N-K? We'll look at J-U-N-Q-U-E and make people look at our mail differently. We also want to consider, particularly the population we're addressing, they're going to prefer, in many cases, direct mail over all their marketing methods. We have a huge hubbub going on, a hubbub baloo, or however you want to say it, on all the Medicare Advantage commercials on television and how it's confusing some people and how some people regret calling in on some of those. And some of them that do may not get the response they probably should have, whatever it happens to be. Thing is, though, TV advertisements, not inexpensive. You have a number of organizations and carriers that are doing that, so it must be effective to one degree or another. How do we play off of that, someone else's efforts, through our direct mail campaigns to kind of piggyback on some of it, but do so in a fashion that's still compliant and non-confusing? It's a way of taking care of folks. And direct mail, a whole bunch of people actually review, enjoy reviewing their mail. When's the last time you got a handwritten note, a thank you note from someone? That make a big difference for you? Man, I don't go through my mail. I might've got it, I might've thrown it out. No, I saw that. That does, that, that was pretty cool. That's part of the effectiveness of this type of campaign because, well, half the folks have responded to a direct mail offer within the last six months in our target audience. That makes a big difference. And almost all of them have taken action because of direct mail within the last year. Now, that action may not always be favorable, but there's someone to talk to, and there's someone that's raised their hand, and it may be the opportunity for us to discuss additional offerings we have available to that individual because the direct mail piece, the review, wasn't the hot button that you thought it was going to be. It, however, may be that opportunity to speak to folks because historically, direct mail has been battle-tested, and it takes care of uh, the need for folks to be part of an overall campaign. And what you're seeing now is an integration of some of the traditional direct mail campaigns plugged with some of the electronic means of eliciting an ex of a response. You're seeing an increasing number of mail out there that makes use of the quick response codes, the QR codes, those lovely pixelated images where folks can, oh, wow, I just check that out with my smartphone. It's going to take me the information. You know, I'm going to get a real-time response. I'm going to get something quicker than uh, just mail in a, in a request, and they're going to take care of me. And so you can tailor your marketing efforts through direct mail by incorporating in other ways of responding to that mail. There's a lot of uh, experienced folks out there that will say, well, folks don't want to mail anything back anymore. Well, there's some folks that only want to mail things back anymore. Or you can put a toll-free number on there. Some folks will call, some won't, whatever it happens to be. This is another option to elicit a response on your direct mail to drive up that favorable, hey, I'm raising my hand, get me some information things that can give you a tie-in with other campaigns, including social media. So it's a great way of combining technology to utilize some of the, the vogue way of reaching out to folks right now and maximize the results 
on a traditionally proven way of reaching it to the public. Some things you want to consider. We're all salespeople. We all have some sort of confidence level, hopefully. And part of that is, well, I know my market better than some of these people. I'm going to write the letter. I would strongly urge you to look at a catalog of letters that are already in existence so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. They'll lay out some of them with the different response rates. The mail houses are able to tell you historically, well, gee, we sent out this much mail. We're getting this sort of response off of that letter. The more specific you are in the letter, the narrower the response, the greater the likelihood of a more qualified prospect. But if you're utilizing pieces that are already in play, you're benefiting from the experience of hundreds of thousands of letters that have gone out. And you don't have to go through the process of figuring out, okay, I've written this. I think it's pretty good. I need to get it approved. How are you getting it approved? Are you using some of the folks at the mail houses to do so? Are you working with a carrier to do that? Are you reaching out to government entities to say, hey, Look at this. Isn't it pretty? I thought of it. I'm going to make it work. Give me your papal blessing on it so I can send it. Well, you don't have to go through that process. You have options that are out there that are already in play that will incorporate much of what we're discussing today or can. And that can make a big difference too when it comes to, man, halfway through July, I don't Sands of the hourglass are, are shuffling through that narrow neck here a little quicker. I don't need to spend my time doing something that's already there. And you also have the, the opportunity to look at some of the differences between generic mailers that speak to a topic in general terms or a branded mailer in conjunction with a carrier a concept, whatever it happens to be. You will see some of the difference based on the targets that you're using between a generic and a branded mailer and if you're working with a carrier they may require you to brand that letter if they're helping fund it so we want to look at the different ways of reaching out to the population how we are budgeting for the programs as well and make certain that perhaps we use a combination of or we look at this and say okay I've got data here that shows it's much more effective to do it this way based on some of the things we've got with the different vendors that are available out there. I want to do it this way and I want to make it part of a campaign. You're integrating in one of the big carriers or one of the regionals. They may or may not think that's a pretty good idea. So we want to make certain too, are we spending out of our pocket and our budget or are we co-oping mailers and that will influence the type of letter that goes out. We also want to make certain that the companies that we use to assist us in these mail campaigns have the technology to make it work more efficiently and effectively. The companies that we're going to talk about here in a little bit are part of the selection process as we vetted them was to make certain that they have systems in play that can get you detail on that response as quickly as possible because it's the whole thing you know if it's too far out they may have forgotten oh man i don't remember mailing anything back you hear that upon occasion how can we expedite the return in that fashion this can make a difference and this is one of the things that will be of a consideration to you if you're going to do your own campaign and ask for responses without utilizing a third party resource to do so. An increasing number of agents have some remarkable automated systems that they use um, to not only respond to initial responses that come to them, but also stay in touch with those folks on an ongoing basis to elicit future business as well. That may be one of the things you use to determine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically outsource this or I'm gonna do it myself. Back in the old days, when I worked with Prudential, I would hand address a minimum of 300 letters a week and mail them out. The hand addressed labeling made it more comfortable to open in certain circumstances. I got a better open rate than some of the other people, but it took time, it took this, it took that. 
what is the cost of deciding how we mail even, not just what we mail, what methods we use to do so. Sorry, I had a frog jump in my throat there for a moment. You actually have some different sources too that you can use as part of your planning process. For those of you that have been active in utilizing the legacy safeguard system to sell in the uh, final expense programs, they actually lay out, gee, if I mail this much, I'm gonna get this much back based on this percentage. This is what it will cost me. This is what it will calculate for the uh, cost per return. And then you can filter into the cost of uh, what it took to get to the sale. And that it can be very helpful in developing your budget. Now you can use this with any type of circumstance. You can plug in different percentages, whatever it happens to be, but it then gives you a resource to say, well, gee, this looked like a good idea, but I'm spending this much money to make this much money kind of just swapping dollars or whatever. We want to make certain that not only is the mail campaign responsive, is it cost effective as well? So we do different things in order to help support that. We do have uh, a mail support program through our organization here at Premier. It is based on production. It drives down the cost of direct mail so you can do so consistently we have a couple of different campaigns in which you can utilize based on qualifications um, one for the health products one for final expense it is a way then that you can budget differently and take advantage of a couple of ways of getting an extra couple thousand pieces of mail out there at a discounted rate and we use vetted lead vendors preferred lead vendors in order to access that support but we do so because we've investigated these organizations we know they have systems to make a direct mail campaign as simple as possible as painless as possible but also as efficient as possible so they have the systems in there with the different crms that say hey agent joe smith agnes moorhead in this area responded go get them it also gives us the opportunity to make certain that the correspondence that goes out is compliant as well. We want to protect you and our interests in that regard because, hey, that headache rolls uphill too. So keep of that, keep that in mind. Some of the programs that are specific, PowerMail is a partner that we make use of, uh, specializing in direct mail with that management system that can make a difference. We also work with target leads that do some of the same things that are available. They have an opportunity also for purchasing of lists if you are a smile and dial type of person some different things that can come into play there as well keep in mind we have other resources for lists as well lead concepts great bunch of folks out there that really stand behind their efforts these are some of the people that will really get you details as to why this one might be the best choice and how we can go about getting that out to the public it works really well we know we have demonstrated success. If it doesn't work as well as we think, we're going to stand behind our product. You also have specific programs that can make a difference. This is a sampling of a lead concepts. Boy, stumbled over my tongue there. I apologize. Dual special needs plan, which has really got some strong response rates. And for folks that are active in the lower income markets, it can make all the difference in the world. And we wanna make certain that you are cognitive of that fact. Tons of different things that can be tailored specifically for you. And Kramer does it as well. So they have some details on lists, the mailers, and also the different campaigns to do some things consistently. That drip marketing program is something that you're putting yourself out there on a regular basis and they recognize you. So that depends upon um, how large of a target market you are uh, looking at and what does it take in order to establish an identity in that market, particularly when we deal with drip marketing. Arm does some wonderful things as well. They have some folks out there that are really an advocate for the agent and we wanna make certain that you're aware of the different opportunities you have with these different vetted carriers it gives you then 
with all of these organizations and the catalogs of the letters that they have available an opportunity to use your full portfolio. Right now, the majority of people on this call are probably thinking, oh, I'm going to do some things for AEP. I got to do some things for Medicare. Yep, you sure do. And that includes looking at and targeting folks that are interested in or maybe on a Medicare Advantage plan, an opportunity for folks that are looking at Medicare supplements and haven't done a review for a while, utilizing a letter that speaks to a complimentary Medicare supplement review. And these vendors have those letters can make a big difference in appealing to that market. And that market does have more disposable income generally to give you the opportunity for other cross sell opportunities or discover other things through your fact finder of, boy, they've got this money sitting in a CD, really need to talk about annuities. Boy, they've looked at this uh, money that's sitting there that they don't intend to use but they don't have long-term care coverage. Maybe there's a hybrid product we can use, or we can use that, that kitty of money for funding a specific solution to a need that they have. And it goes across the board in all these different categories. Long and short-term care programs, terribly, terribly needed, terribly, terribly undersold. Uh, disability income normally aimed at a much younger population, but that gives us an opportunity to build in our own funnel of T65 folks. And that is where we can really see the needle move when we speak to the different ancillary benefits. Uh, dental programs, great demand product, great door opener, and it's a way of building your own T65 possibilities because a lot of these dental programs have a price increase at 65. So you can market 63, 64-year-olds that are in need of dental coverage and want to continue that post-retirement and post the package that they have there. A great way of establishing people as your clients, adding to a book of business and opening up the possibilities for future relationship as well as you review their other coverages. And that same thing appeals to these other categories as well. Cancer is a big hot button for a lot of folks. There are a number of critical illness and cancer plans that are wonderful, that can really make a difference. I can personally testify to that. It can make a big, big advantage to the, the folks that look at that and target some of that demographic. How do you figure that out? Well, that's more of a cast a blanket type of thing. But everybody has had an experience with someone who's dealing with cancer. It may be themselves, it may be a family member, it may be a friend, might be somebody in the church or somebody they just heard about. That, but the details out there as to the need for those programs. And because of the increasing popularity of Medicare Advantage programs, the majority of them come with a hospital co-payment, either a per stay or per day type of program, talking to and addressing that specific need through hospital indemnity programs can make a huge difference too. So you've got a number of different programs that illuminate the possibilities of different campaigns. And if we're looking into the same household or the same target area, perhaps altering the campaign can make a big difference and rotating those topics because we're gonna do it consistently. We're gonna do it regularly and folks will become accustomed to, this is Agent John Smith, Boy, I know him from somewhere, somehow. That guy that have my car insurance? No. Where do I recognize it? Well, you might hit that hot button because you're doing some things consistently and letting them choose what they want the opening discussion to pertain to. That gives us then also that extra benefit of driving up retention, increasing our persistency of product across the board. Studies have shown the more product you have in a household, the more likely that individual's going to stick with you and not change their coverage to someone else. We want to change someone else's coverage. We want our own. However, keep in mind, this happens regardless of the company that you use or what you're selling. It just has to be with the same agent, and that's you. 
And so utilizing a rotation of topics can aid in driving up multiple policies in a household. Obviously, when we respond to a lead, we do a little bit of a fact finder. We can help it that way too, but it's another way to get someone to respond. So we're going to plan overall. We're halfway through July now. Most folks have figured out where they're going to work, what their target market is. Have they become involved with retail? Uh, what are the other components of their marketing program? So we're going to look at that and we're going to see how direct mail can make a difference. What programs we're going to schedule the responses or schedule the outreach with. And that might be the same product a number of times in a row. Or you might alter it. And you might send it out more frequently or with different consistency of your overall plan. But adding two is a little different than no, I'm going to drop it all together. Well, that might be something to consider if you're being so specific in your outreach where your responses just aren't there. And then there is the course of, hey, how do I pay for it? I'm going to budget it as part of my marketing program. I'm going to work with a carrier. I'm going to work with my marketing organization. How are we going to fund, fund this outreach? And then we put it in play. I've got to pull in a little active or a Latin there because we're going to do things instead of just talk about them in a manner of speaking. And we're going to do so consistently because it's like an exercise program. You do it once or twice, you feel the pain, you don't get a lot of results. But if you do it consistently, that's where you see things pay off. And that applies to a whole number of things in our lives, but it surely does pertain to direct mail. You have also the opportunity to use programs that or kind of fill in the blank type of situations in a manner of speaking, where you're utilizing these to um, plug holes in your calendar, or it may be a regular part of what you do as part of your marketing campaign. So we have a program that we utilize, never distributed direct mail responses, still fresh, never talked to, use them as part of a fill-in, or I'm gonna do this regularly. This is how I'm gonna get some of the appointments that I need some of the people I have to have to speak to in order to be effective now and throughout the immediate future. The cost of these programs, well, that one, they, they do vary according to area, according to time of year, that sort of thing that comes into play. And this is about as expensive as I've seen these leads, but they're right in line or a little lower than a whole bunch of stuff you can buy off the internet, unless you're doing a campaign yourself that is miraculously effective. However, this also gives you the opportunity to, <coughs> excuse me, make certain that perhaps the area you're targeting, well, the folks that I use on general mail campaigns, they're already doing a mail campaign with someone else and I can't do it for 90 days or whatever timetable they have as a restrictive factor to protect the people that are working with it. This can be a way of making certain that we're still accessing that market in that fashion with folks that have raised their hand saying, give me some information on that. So you got a number of different campaigns that you can use. We're gonna look at this as an overall plan. What else do I get out of working with Premier Marketing? The world's electronic now. I mean, we're talking, I'm staring at a computer screen, yapping at you, it's coming to you virtually all part of an electronic process. And it starts with contracting. When you're looking at certain carriers that are of immediate need or may have certification pieces that require electronic systems that they utilize, that we utilize them as well, we're gonna do that. But you have an opportunity as well to create your agent profile through SureLC, Surance Bay, whatever uh, shade of lipstick you call that you've put on that pig, it gives us an opportunity then to make certain that our handwriting isn't involved, we're submitting a complete contract, we're doing things to make certain our portfolio that we've talked about, that we're rotating through with different types of programs. Well, we may have multiple carriers in those sub uh, sections as well, a great way to do it quickly. We do offer discounted errors and admissions coverage, for qualified agents. What makes you a qualified agent? Well, you got a contract with us. But this is a plan you own. It is not 
being added to a blanket E and O policy for one carrier or another. And then you got to wonder how am I going to satisfy with that with all the other folks I contract with? Because keep in mind, no matter how big Goliath is, they may not have everything we need. Premier is huge. We have a ton of carriers. We don't have everything. It's just it's the way it is. And we want to make certain that you have protection no matter whom you contract through. We hope it's with us. We work to make it through us. But we want to protect you across the board. And this is something you own. Satisfies that requirement the insurance companies have of you. And you're taking care of it with a program that you own. We do also offer discounted continuing education products, programs, I should say, through our association with Web's, uh, WebCE, a great way of making certain your license stays in play. And we have a program for you on a modified guarantee issue basis for disability income for you. As an agent, independent agent, you're responsible for your own benefit package. This is a way to make certain that you're insuring your ability to earn money and you get paid a commission on it as well. Much is where today's presentation is being recorded and will be available on our website and on our YouTube channel. Past presentations are there as well. So I alluded to some of the other things you can do in the community, working with providers, working with uh, faith-based organizations coming to, to mind really quickly. Those past presentations are online so you can access them. And it's a way of looking at that and then saying, well, one of the things I can do when I approach this center of influence in the community, I speak to them about how I am going to make anything that we do, an event with them, effective. And that may well entail the use of direct mail. I cannot undersell the value of this program for agents. And this is the complimentary access to the electronic tool, Medicare Center. Well, that sounds like an old MA agent. Why don't you just speak like JJ Walker and say, yeah, it's free. It is. The agents that contract with us, it gives you a single login to multiple quoting engines powered by Connecture, Sunfire, CSG, other tools that are in there. It gives you the ability to collect that scope of appointment, store it for that 10 year period if you sell them or not, through multiple means of reaching out to do so. And keep in mind, you want to store that scope if you sell them or not. That's the requirement. It then frees you up to do side by side plan comparisons on those programs, a way of managing that lead flow through a CRM that you have available in there. So you can do those year over year reviews because you're using it to quote programs. And you can simply say, well, here's the medications we spoke to and of the, what you used in the past, what changes may have come about, are things the same? Let's go through and see if this is still the best program for you. And the resources that are in that learning center can help you with talking points in that regard as well. Medicare Advantage and uh, prescription drug programs, well, the max comp on that's set by the government. Carriers tend to make certain that they're offering the max comp because that's the only way they can be competitive against other carriers or for other reasons as well. However, there are programs that do offer other incentives, uh, marketing dollars or whatever it happens to be. We want to make certain that you're utilizing those as part of a decision making process as to what I'm offering, what I'm out there doing. And that is so important that we have a special page on our website to speak to that because it'll help you qualify for carrier trips and other incentive programs we offer as well. We also make available contact lists available to you, call list where it's compliant to do so, information on those different campaigns to centers of influence in the community, working with carrier generated prospects. A lot of that is really local market driven. So we want to make certain that you're part of that process. They know you're working with them as a quid pro quo. I got to throw in a little Latin there again. Uh, you're scratching their back, they're scratching yours. So you're in the process of getting help from a specific carrier with whom you contract, certify, and present. We also have those internet lead programs that I spoke of, direct mail support, a T65 locator, and a program that goes through and reminds you about one of the most effective traditional ways of doing things as well, 
and that's through the use of referrals. Well, uh, studies have shown only about 11% of agents ask for referrals. So it brings up the whole politically incorrect Pepe Le Pew um, pursuing Penelope for a kiss. You don't get kissed if you don't ask. And this is a way to make certain that we do so in a seamless fashion and we're not a used car salesman, no effect used car salesman, no, no offense intended, or, or, or someone in a tweed jacket opening their coat and say, hey, you wanna buy a watch? More subtle, more effective, some things we can do to make it work. I talked about the lead support we have for direct mail in those two different campaigns and the specific vendors that we use to do so. I spoke of the responses that we have with direct mail that you're not directing the whole campaign, you're just buying what leads may be available at what price they may be priced at as well. The internet uh, leads are through Facebook for both final expense and Medicare. One thing about this, as I mentioned earlier, we're at a little stopwatch. Microwave response works both ways. That T65 locator, it's another program made available without cost to our agents. Hey, JJ Walker, free. You download a program to your smartphone or your desktop. You register. They check and make certain that you have product with us. You have availability then to use this without cost. Use it free. And you can actually see where people live. So let's say you have three appointments in an area. Uh, one of them cancels. You want to make certain you maximize the value of your time. You're going to go talk to people about dental programs in a particular area. Door knock for it. Or door knock for final expense. Or door knock for med sub. You're not door knocking for MA or PDP. Good way to lose your contract and get stuck in compliance hell. Um, but it's a valuable resource for you to use across the board with other programs as an entree into a household. Spoke about the, the use of referrals through the sales process. It's also a key component to use with your book of business. So as you use that CRM in Medicare Center or whatever other contact database you use, Cycle back with them about, hey, want to do your review? And hey, do you know of other people I can help? Utilize that very cost of, effective way of getting people to refer to you. We do all this because we want your business. We want to be referable to you, to your agent friends as well. And in order to do so, you got to use it. You got to put it in play. And what we have now with direct mail is people already planning that. And if you're working with a vendor that basically protects a market because someone's bought in that market already to, to, to mail, well, now's the time to do it. It's the old uh, John Wayne line in the, the Cowboys that I paraphrase of slap a piece of bacon in that biscuit saddle up, let's ride because we're burning daylight. You got to put this in play now. If you want to be effective through AEP and plan on, I'm going to mail once, I'm going to mail three times, what are you doing now to block in that as part of your marketing program and you're acting on it now? I'm going to check really quickly for questions. One nice thing about being caffeinated up and talking really fast, I seem to have covered most of what we're looking for. This gives me, however, an opportunity to thank you for the agents that have dealt with and work with Medic, uh, Medicare product and other programs through Premier Marketing. I thank you for that business. I thank you for that association. We look to deepen it. We want to be a greater resource to you in the future as well. For those of you that are considering us, I thank you for that consideration. But overall, I also want to thank you for spending time with us today, investing your time with us in order to go through some of the possibilities you have of reaching into the community with direct mail. So all that said and done, until we are able to visit again, I'm going to wish you good selling. Thanks so very much. We'll talk to you soon.